Hi guys, I'm Laura Vitale and on this episode of Laura in the Kitchen I want to share with you my Nona's delicious rosemary stuffed pork loin that we are going to cover. We're going to wrap it in pancetta and roast it to perfection. Now this was requested by you guys on my vlog channel so if you don't follow us on my vlog channel, on our vlog channel, you definately should. We are a ton of fun. Not really, well we are. But anyways, this is an incredible simple recipe. And this is my Nona. This is how she makes her pork loin. I'm just adding some pancetta, but first you'll need a good three pound pork loin. It's got a thin layer of fat on top, which you want that. I also have some thinly sliced pancetta. I've got some fresh rosemary. Look at that beautiful thing. Parsley, tons of garlic, salt and pepper, olive oil, some white wine. I'm using my white wine that I got in from Club W this month, um, which you definitely should check out Club W if you haven't already. I will leave a link down below. And you'll need a lemon. Lemon is optional. I like it. I dig it. So I'm adding it. Okay. So, the first thing you want to do is get your oven preheated to 400. What I have here is a roasting pan with a wire rack because I want the roast to sit a little bit higher. I don't want it to sit directly um, in the baking, in, in the roasting pan because we are hoping to get lots of juices to have like a little bit of sauce to go with it. Okay, let's get started. Now, in my little teeny tiny food processor, I'm going to add my rosemary. Now, this is a lot of rosemary, probably the, the leaves of two sprigs. Obviously, it, this, this giant sprig of rosemary isn't common, but if it is that you're wherever you live, then by all means use one giant sprig. But you are looking at about, when you pack it all up, it'll be about two tablespoons, two and a half to three tablespoons of rosemary. That is going to be the flavor base of this fantastic little, it's like a mixture between a paste and a pesto. You know, it's not thick enough to be a paste, but it's not thin enough to be a pesto. It's phenomenal. Lots of garlic and some parsley. I've got a good amount of garlic there because you want this to really shine through. And to me, um, rosemary and garlic are like best friends when it comes to pork or poultry. I just feel like it, they go together perfectly. I'm going to add a few tablespoons of olive oil. This thing is, is pouring out so slowly we might be here for the next month and a half, but Rest assured, I'm going to get a few tablespoons of olive oil out of this. <laughs> that looks good. I'm going to add just a little teeny tiny bit of lemon zest. Now, you don't have to. I'm only adding about a half a teaspoon or so. And the reason why is because I feel like that freshness that peeks through just ever so slightly from the salty juices of the pancetta, I think it just goes together really well. And lemon, garlic, rosemary, parsley, best friends. So you just need a little tiny bit because you don't want this to be overwhelmingly, you know, citrusy. You want just a little something special in the background. And then we are going to hit this with some salt and pepper. I'm not really hitting anybody. I'm just going to add some salt and pepper to this. I love a good handful of black pepper and a generous sprinkling of salt. Now I'm going to just put the lid on and whisk this up until it's nice and smooth. That looks absolutely perfect. You can make it smoother if you want to. I like a little bit chunky because I love the garlic bits. Mm, delicious. Okay, I've got this beautiful piece of pork loin here. It's about three pounds and it does have a thin layer of fat here which you can totally remove if you want to. However, I feel like there's a big misconception when it comes to pork loin. A lot of people think that it's because it's pork, it's really fatty, it's really greasy, but I don't think it is at all. In my opinion, it's actually quite lean, and if you don't put a little bit of fat on there, it can be really dry. So I like to leave a thin layer of this because it's all going to cook up and melt and be delicious. If you don't eat pork, you can substitute this by using just a couple of large turkey breasts like we did in my stuffed turkey breast video not too long ago. You could certainly do that and then completely omit the pancetta, but that's just felt like putting it out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my pork loin here. Essentially, like we're going to do like we're opening up a book, except we're not going through all the way because you don't want to open this up all the way. You want to just get this nice and flattened out. Once you have it butterflied like a book, we are not going to pound this out because I don't think it needs to be. Now, I just washed my hands because I'm going to go ahead and season this and you don't want to get dirty, porky hands into the salt container. So I'm just going to season this with some salt and pepper. Not too much salt because we did add a good amount of salt to our little pesto mixture there, if you will. Just a little bit because you want to make sure everything is well flavored. 
And then you're going to take this glorious mixture. Think of it like the massage oil for your pork loin. It's going to be fantastic. And these are flavors that I very much grew up eating uh, with pork and poultry and things like that. So these are total, like really all up my alley. But if you wanted to add things to spice things up a bit, by all means, go ahead and do that. That is what it should look like. And as you can see, I mean, this smells incredible. I mean, you really should be here for this. It smells amazing. Now, I'm leaving a little bit of a border right here on the edge on my left side here because what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this up just like so. And it, the extra oil mixture will push out. So you can just go ahead and pop this back in because when it all cooks together, it doesn't really matter. I just placed my pork right there for a second and I have got some kitchen twine that I cut into pretty big pieces and I'm just laying them across my board because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my pork, which if it unrolls, it's totally fine. Push these together to make sure it all fits well. Cover this like so. Really simple, really easy and you also flavor the outside. And then you're going to take these beautiful pieces of pancetta and you are going to cover this whole, like the whole top and sides. You don't have to do the bottom, you just want to do the top and sides of your pork overlapping a little just to make sure that you have every little bit covered because this is going to be so delicious. Look at that, it's like it was meant to be. That slice is a little bit thin but that's okay. And then you just take your kitchen twine and you tie it. I don't do any fancy schmancy tying, I just do literally a couple knots. You don't want to do too tight, otherwise it will do the opposite and completely burst if it's too tight. So I just like to do about five or six just to ensure that this is going to keep its shape. I placed my pork on my rack and I added just a little bit of water to the bottom of my roasting dish. And now I'm going to add some white wine. You could use any white wine you drink, nice and crisp, not too sweet is what I was looking for, what I look for. I'm going to add a couple of cups of this. It sounds like a lot, but it's going to cook out and evaporate. It's going to be delicious. And now I'm going to put this into the oven at 400 degrees and it's going to take between an hour and 15 minutes and maybe a little bit more. You're just looking for the internal temperature to reach 155 degrees. You can cook this to 145. I prefer 155 and letting it rest and just give me a beautifully delicious juicy piece of meat that I know it's safe for anyone to eat. So I'm going to pop this in. Once it's had its time roasting, I will show you what it looks like when it is done. My roast was in the oven for about an hour and 25 minutes. I checked on it and it was perfect, 155 degrees Fahrenheit and I let it rest for a good 15 minutes. I took the pan juices and I put them into my fat separator and I'm just going to keep those there for now because I'm going to just drizzle a little bit of the juices from the bottom, not the fat, the juices from the bottom over it once we have carved it. Now I'm just going to bring this closer to me, take my kitchen uh, scissors and snip off the twine. Oh, look at the crispiness. That is going to be so good. I can hear the crackling of the pancetta. Look at that. Mm. Now it's time to do your best and cut this baby up. If the pancetta starts crisp, you know, kind of crumbling a little bit, look at that. If I pinch it, you can still see how juicy that is. You see the juices? That's how you know it is perfectly cooked. I love this recipe and I love cooking any kind of meat to the right temperature and for me 155 is the right temperature. You can cook it again to 145, it's totally okay. I just prefer 155. I feel like it's delicious and moist and those herbs and that garlic and the pancetta. I mean it is a feast for the eyes and definitely for your taste buds. Absolutely worthy of being on your holiday table. Without a doubt, or any table really, any time of year. It doesn't have to be a holiday table, but I wanted to share this recipe with you because I feel like it's easy to do, feeds a crowd, and pork loin tends to be kind of inexpensive around this time of year. Oops. Oh, you know, the pancetta fell off. Oh. Mm, I know. You feel very bad for me right now that I just had to eat that. Mm -mm -mm. Just going to take a little bit of the fat out and then just pour the juices 
down. Be very careful because you don't want it to go into the fat. You just want to pour the juices. And I mean, look at that. All the brown bits from the bottom of the roasting tray. All we did is put, all I did was put these in the fat separator and that was it. And that is pretty much it. Started from the bottom, now we're here. We pour the juices out, we kept the fat in there, and I just so happened to have a little piece here that didn't make it on the plate. Ugh, I can't wait. I mean, look at that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's juicy. The, the herbs, perfection on every bite. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Delicious. Easy. This is my happy dance. Laura in kitchen.com will have the recipe. Hope you enjoy spending time with me. I'll see you next time. <laughs> bye bye.